I'm Tanya Rowlett and I'm the copyright administrator for the Otter project. And what I wanted to do today is just discuss some of the copyright issues and IPR issues that we've come across to date in the Otter project and tell you how we've dealt with them. Just before I start, a disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, so this is not legal advice. This is purely based on my experience both as the copyright administrator for the project and in my usual day job as the university's copyright administrator. People generally tend to use the terms copyright and intellectual property rights, which I'll call IPR from now on, fairly interchangeably, but they are two separate entities, so I thought it was probably worth just defining them. So, copyright is the exclusive right to reproduce in any form those works defined in section 1.1 brackets 1 of the Copyright Designs and Patents Act 1988. And these works are original, literary, dramatic, musical or artistic works, sound recordings, films, broadcasts. IPR is an all-embracing term covering copyright, patents, trademarks and other rights. So essentially, copyright is just one part of IPR. So, which of these are relevant to the Otter Project? Well, unsurprisingly, probably, both. So, how have we dealt with institutional IPR within Otter? Well, the senior management of the university support the move to making education open and accessible and we've had some enthusiastic and willing departmental contacts who have either provided us with their materials or they've helped us engage other partners in the project. Whilst the aim of the project is to release materials on an open access basis, we're not releasing them license free. The license we've chosen to release them under is what's known as a Creative Commons open license. And finally, to ensure that everybody knows exactly what we're doing with their resources and there aren't any shocks at the end, we've developed uh, within the team what's called a partner agreement which we send to everybody whose resources we're dealing with and just ask them to acknowledge that they're happy with what we're doing. What is a Creative Commons license? Well, Creative Commons is a corporation which offers free licensing options if you want to make your resources open access. Many OER projects or companies that want to make their resources open access use such a license. And essentially, their licenses are made up of four key factors detailed here. The right to attribution. So if somebody reuses your work, you have to be attributed as the author of the original work. You can choose whether or not to allow people to make derivatives of your work. Non-commercial, fairly self-explanatory. You can say whether it can be used for commercial or non-commercial purposes. And finally, share alike. If you agree to release it under a license which will allow people to make derivatives, you can specify that they release those derivative materials under exactly the same license that you've placed on it. What have we used? Well, it's attribution, non-commercial, share alike license. And this symbol will appear on all of our materials. And if I just click on it, we can demonstrate the other beauty of a Creative Commons license in that it will tell anybody that's looking exactly what you can and can't do with the materials. Just scrolling down a bit, just want to draw your attention to this bit here. Nothing in this license impairs or restricts the author's moral rights. This is really, I think, important because one of the author's moral rights is that as the creator of the materials, your materials shouldn't be subject to derogatory treatment or you shouldn't be associated with derogatory treatment. So it gives the author the right to address if somebody does something which a court would deem to be derogatory treatment. I know that's probably one of the things that people are concerned about when they think about making their resources open access. What copyright issues have we encountered in the project? Well, there's images, but there's also quotes, tables and diagrams and screenshots. <coughs> In the cases I've looked at so far, many of the materials, many of the images have been departmental images. They're taken by a member of staff, great, they're usually okay to use. If it's taken by somebody who perhaps is affiliated, doesn't hold a contract with the university, I would normally, we would go out and try and get their permission to use the images. Some of the other images we've come across are from national and international bodies, which normally I kind of look at in horror and think, oh, people have just found them on the web and they've just stuck them in their materials. But many of the producers of the materials I've come across have obviously thought about copyright because having checked out the terms and conditions, they can be used for non-commercial educational purposes. So again, great, haven't got too much to worry about on that front. On to quotes, I've come across limited amount of texts. They've been properly referenced. I don't have an issue with that. 
if there was a substantial quote, pages and pages, I'd probably have a bit of an issue and I'd have to look into that further. Tables and diagrams, again, I've checked the sources on them. Most of them are brilliantly referenced, so you can track down where they're from and they're absolutely fine. Some of them perhaps not so well referenced at the moment, so we have to go go back and have discussions with the, uh, the material creator. And finally, screenshots. Now, we see screenshots everywhere in training materials. The terms and conditions of Microsoft and Blackboard don't really say much about what you can and can't do with them. And so I've contacted both of them just to make sure you, know, you see them everywhere, you assume you can use them. Unfortunately, their view is no, you can't actually use them. Certainly Blackboard have come back and said, you can't use them for open access purposes and you can't repurpose them. So obviously that's somewhat incompatible with our license. So we're gonna to have to remove those. Microsoft have just given me a standard. We cannot deviate from the guidelines that they've stated, which means we can only resize screenshots. So we can use them, but we can only resize them. We can't overlay them and we can't use portions of the screen. So that's a bit of a disappointment. Hopefully, as the open access movement increases, they will realise that it's actually probably to their benefit. More specifically, I've come across a Wikimedia image and we looked at video footage, voice recordings and YouTube links. Just to give you an example, the Wikimedia image, <laughs> in the training guide, there's reference to a Sami tent, Sami people, and this photo is included in it. And if you scroll down just here, permissions that photographs in this collection were published before 1923 and are therefore in the public domain. Onto the video footage, well, not only do we have to think about the actual content, or who's in it, what's in it, where have they sourced that from, also who shot the footage? Well, in this case, or in two of the cases of the three videos that I've looked at, it's University of Leicester staff, both in it and responsible for taking the footage. So we've gone to them just to make sure that they're happy for us to use it. And the same with voice recordings. We don't just have to think about whose voice is it, we also have to think about are they reading from a script and who wrote the script. Again, University of Leicester staff, so we've asked their permission. One of the videos was outsourced to a, a company and um, used a professional voiceover person. So we have got to go to the company to check that they've thought about all the copyright issues. I'm sure they have, but I'm not happy to sign off on it until I have it in writing. Finally, YouTube links. There is a great deal of original material out on YouTube, which has been posted by the creators. That's absolutely fine. I'm more than happy for people to use that in resources. But if you even have an inkling that it contains infringing material and one of the links we came across clearly did, then there is a debate as to whether we could be liable for secondary infringement just by putting a link in. So we've decided to remove that. Are there any general rules of thumb to do with copyright on uh, in open access materials? Well, yes, there are. Do use Creative Commons resources with a compatible license. <laughs> You can use limited extracts from your own work. And if you need an image and you can't find something something suitable under an open license and it's an everyday object, you can go and take your own photo. Do you use sources where the license terms explicitly permit use? If they don't say that they, you can do what you want to do, contact people that own the rights. You can use items which are out of copyright. And I would recommend using organisations which provide advice and guidance. So we've got GISC Legal. They do some great tutorials and resources and they have an advisory service for educators. There's a web to rights project and we'll provide you with flowcharts and tools for deciding whether material that you want to use is in or out of copyright or whether you can use it for purposes that you wish. GISC Digital Media have released a great guide on finding images on Flickr, which I would recommend everybody to have a look at if you want to use images, both in your teaching materials and if you are looking at making any materials open access. EduServe have a toolkit which is an introduction to copyright. I would say don't use YouTube resources with infringing material, logos or trademarks without permission. Don't use extensive extracts in your own published work without checking your contract. They might be absolutely happy for you to use it, but it's worth checking with the publishers. And don't assume if it's on the web it's fine to use. Check the terms and conditions and the copyright notice. In summary, my view is that copyright shouldn't hold you back from making resources open access. But make sure you reference your resources correctly as you go along and check the license terms of materials and keep copies of them in case anyone asks any questions in the future. And if you're not sure whether you can use certain material, contact the rights holder. They're in the best position to tell you whether or not you can use the material. Thank you very much.